Becky. Welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today's video and I don't know why I'm even filming this because this is not something I've ever seen anybody do. It's not something I planned on doing but it just popped into my head last night and I thought there's probably a lot of things that I could share with you guys that I never have. Five secrets that I've never told you. So if you guys want to hear five things you don't know about me, then stay tuned. The first thing I know I've never told you all and that I don't think I've ever really told that many people is I cannot cry. I want to, and I used to be able to, I used to cry all the time about everything, commercials, sad things, happy things, like I just, all the time. But for whatever reason, that part of me has like broken and I cannot hardly cry at all over really anything. And there's plenty of times that I want to, if I'm really mad or I'm really sad and I just cannot make it happen. And it reminds me, one of my favorite Christmas movies is The Holiday and Cameron Diaz's character in that movie, she's not supposed to be able to cry. And the whole movie, she's like trying to like make herself cry at all these sad things that are happening and she can't. And that reminds me of me because there's so many times that I really want to either to prove to someone that what they've done has really hurt me or upset me or made me mad or just to relieve stress and kind of get that out but I can't. And I mean, I, I've cried maybe, maybe four times in the last last seven years. And there were plenty of times that I wanted to and should have cried a plenty more than that, but I just haven't and I can't. So it's really weird. You guys let me know, are you like that? Like, do you want to cry or have a natural reaction to something which is crying in a lot of cases, but you can't? I don't know, but it's super annoying. Something else you probably don't know about me is I actually have a condition called a vasovagal syncope. Um, it's basically a thing that everybody has a vasovagal response. Like if you've ever seen a movie and somebody sees blood and they pass out, that is a vasovagal response. Everybody has one. It's just some people's are either tripped up a lot more often by certain things um, or certain things cause it to happen a lot more often, I guess I should say. In my case, um, we didn't know that I really had an issue with it, like a condition with it, until a few years ago when I got really sick at my stomach one night and I passed out and I fell down, I hit my head and all this other stuff. My husband had gone fishing. He was like way out in the country somewhere and I was by myself with the girls and I remember calling him. I woke up on the floor and I was like, what just happened? And so I called him and I was like, I think I just passed out. So like he rushed home and all this stuff happened. I went to the ER. By the time I got there, like there was nothing wrong with me. I was perfectly normal. All my levels were fine. And it took a long time of a lot of different doctors and things. I actually had to fight to get a tilt table test, which is basically um, the test that they give you to find out if you have vasovagal syncope. They strap you to a table like this, and then they raise you up and you have to stand strapped to this table for a certain amount of time. I think it was like 45 minutes or an hour or something really uncomfortable. And you think well, you're just standing up, but you're not really standing up. You're kind of standing up, but you're also kind of leaning, but you can't really stand all the way up because you're strapped. So like it was a really uncomfortable position, but basically you stand up like that for a certain amount of time. And then they gradually, like they lower you back down, they raise you back up, they lower you back down. And if you pass up, pass out in that situation, then that's, I guess, how they tell that you have vasovagal syncope. Basically, what they have found for me, and hopefully they're right, but I mean, what seems to be true is that I have really low blood pressure, and which makes sense because I'm cold a lot and things like that. I've actually been to the doctor, and they couldn't find my blood pressure with the cuff. They had to actually, like, do it this way. So I get, I just tend to run with really low blood pressure, and that can trip off, that can trip up my vasovagal syncope. Also, they say stress and anxiety can cause you to have episodes where you either pass out or you feel like you're going to pass out. And I've had quite a few of those over the, over the years. And I haven't actually, well, I'm not going to say it. I almost said it. I don't want to jinx myself, but there's been plenty of times where I thought I was going to pass out. I have to like tense up my whole body and like tense my calves to push blood back up towards my heart because I just feel like I'm going to pass out. So it's not fun having that condition. I realize there are some people that have it really, really bad. They pass out a lot. They actually can have service animals because they pass out so often. The animals know what to do when they pass out. So obviously I'm very blessed that it's not gotten to that point. I have to make sure I keep my blood pressure up. So I have to actually increase my sodium and my water, which is kind of funny because the sodium makes you want water. Well, the more water you drink, the more you flush out your system. So I'm constantly like a cycle of sodium and water, sodium and water, sodium and water. 
and just to try to make sure I keep my blood pressure up. So that is something that you guys probably did not know about me. Something else that I don't really ever talk about on YouTube is the type of YouTubers that I don't watch. And I don't have as much time to watch YouTubers as I want to now that I am actually a YouTuber. Back before I started my channel, I had a lot more time to watch YouTube videos. Now that I'm actually working on YouTube and doing YouTube myself, there's a lot less free time to be able to watch YouTube. Um, but I will say, when I do have the chance to watch TV, that's normally what I watch is my favorite YouTubers. But there are some that I just cannot tolerate. Either I don't watch them at all, or I used to watch them and I've actually unsubscribed just because I feel like they're becoming too much of a, an overproduced show. If I wanted to watch an overproduced show, I would watch something on HDTV or I would watch, you know, something else. I, I like YouTube and I think a lot of you guys like YouTube because it feels like it's other people's normal lives and it's not some kind of big production where they've got like super crazy editing and, you know, all this stuff that goes into it. And I know it looks nice and everything, but at the end of the day, I'm not interested in seeing a life that looks like it's overproduced and it looks like it may be fake because it's so overproduced. So a lot of those channels that I used to watch, and usually they're the ones that started out kind of small. They were they had a smaller audience when I started watching them, but as they've grown, um, they've become kind of that overproduced TV show, and I don't like that. That's not relatable to me. That doesn't make me feel motivated. It doesn't make me feel any better about my life if I'm watching people that feel like it's not real. So those people I either don't watch at all, or if their channels have become that, I have unsubscribed. Also, people that make nothing but sponsored videos drives me nuts. And I do sponsor videos. You guys know this. But I really try hard to space them out. There have been times where I've had a week or two or maybe two or three have gone up. But that's just because of how it had happened. But normally that doesn't happen. And normally I do my best to keep that from happening. But there are some channels, one in particular, one in particular that I can just, I can't stop thinking about it. Because I used to love that channel. Again, they started out smaller and as they've grown, like I'm not kidding, every single video is sponsored. If there's not, if there's a video up that week, it is sponsored. And it just drives me nuts. And I just feel like how, how can you possibly be this passionate about this many sponsored things? Like I just don't get it. And it just seems fake to me. And it really, in my opinion, lowers the believability of this channel and this person. Maybe not. Maybe they are 100% legitimate and they love every single one of these products, but I just, it just is tiring to me to feel like I'm watching a commercial every single week. So for that reason, I don't watch their videos anymore. And I, that's just the truth. And I don't know if you guys agree with me or not. Um, and I don't have a problem with sponsor videos. I want to say that again, because I know that's how people make their money. That's how I make my money. Um, most of my money from YouTube. You don't get most of your money from AdSense, like the ads. Most of the money you get is from sponsor videos. I don't have a problem with sponsor videos whatsoever. I just feel like the people that do them consistently, um, like over and over and over and over, like one right after the other, for a long period of time, it gets really old and it just kind of, in my opinion, cheapens their channel. That's just me. And I'm just being honest with you guys, but that's something I've never told you really. I'm not gonna name names of who it is. Um, but I just feel like that's what I don't watch on YouTube. I don't have time to watch YouTube channels that I feel like are fake, overproduced, or just trying to sell me something all the time. The fourth thing I don't think I've ever really talked to you guys about is my biggest pet peeves. And really, every pet peeve I have pretty much boils down to one kind of overarching category. And that overarching category is people that are intrusive on other people. I'm all for freedom. Of course I am. I'm all for being able to do what you want as long as it's not hurting someone else. But I also think there's a very fine line and there is a balance between your freedom and what is rude, disrespectful, and infringing on other people's freedom and rights. And that and there is a very fine line. But I feel like one of my main pet peeves that's kind of in that category is people who are on their phones loudly either talking on their phone really loudly, having their phone on speakerphone and carrying on a conversation in a restaurant or somewhere else where other people have to hear it, letting their kids watch their phone or play games on their phone with all the pinging and the dinging and the noise. And the, I hate that so bad. 
for so many reasons. Number one, it's rude and it's distracting. You're out trying to eat or something or do something else and you're constantly hearing like this someone talking or the speakerphone noise or the game sounds noises and all that stuff. I hate that. Plus it annoys me that people don't go out and talk to each other at, at dinner anymore. They shove a phone in front of their kid's face or the parents have a phone shoved in front of their face and nobody's talking to each other. Nobody's looking at each other. And it makes me really, really sad because I know that kids get annoying and you want to like make them be quiet. And I understand that. And I do think you should keep your kids quiet when you're out in public. Um, but on the same token, I shoving a phone in front of their face, in my opinion, is not the way to do that. You know, we were all raised without having phones. You know, we didn't have cell phones, most of us, if you're around my age, until you were older. So our parents had to keep us quiet in restaurants and other places without a cell phone. And they managed... And I think it's just a really bad habit to get into as a parent to just give your kid a phone to keep them quiet. And as a parent, it's a really bad habit for you to be on your phone when you're with your kids or your family because they see that they're not important. The conversation that you could be having is not important. Whatever you're doing on your phone is more important than them. Now, I realize sometimes we get phone calls and sometimes we have to answer an email for work or something. That happens to me too. But I see it so often and I see that the, it goes on so long during the dinner that I feel like this cannot possibly all be like important. Like life or death has to be done right now. And you guys know what I mean. It just definitely seems like a very sad epidemic that kids and or parents feel like they have to be on their phones even when they're out to eat. That really bothers me and it really bothers me especially when them being on their phone bothers me and my family and our meal because they're making so much noise. They're talking so loud that their kid is playing a game so loudly or, um, you know, whatever is going on is making a lot of noise on a phone. That drives me crazy. And that is one of my like top, 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 top pet peeves. Right. The fifth thing that you guys don't know about me is I am a very emotional person on the inside, but I have a very hard time showing it on the outside. I am very over aware of being too vulnerable and sharing too many emotions makes me too vulnerable. And I don't know why I'm that way, but I definitely am. I think all of the ooey gooey gushy like stuff on the inside, but I have a really hard time expressing it outwardly. And um, it's just really weird and it's frustrating because I do want to. I do want to tell people these things that I feel. And I do want to be more emotional and, and uh, you know, out with, outward with my emotions, but I just have a really hard time doing it, even when it comes to religion. I am more vocal with you guys about my religion and my faith than I am with anybody in my personal life, except maybe my kids. I am pretty pretty vocal with them about like religion and God and importance, the importance of that and all that stuff. But like even my husband, like I don't pray in front of him. I just... I don't know. And he doesn't pray in front of me. It's really weird. It is the weirdest thing. And I don't know why, because we're both Christians. We both understand the importance of raising Christian, of being Christians and raising our kids to follow and love Jesus, which we do, but we don't ever do it together, if that makes sense. It's really, really weird. And I don't know why. And again, that kind of boils down to sharing the emotions of your faith kind of also kind of ties into me with sharing my, my personal emotions about, you know, other stuff. It's not religious. So for the, those two things combined, it's just really weird. And I cannot express it the way that I want to. And if I do, I get embarrassed and like want to go hide. So you guys let me know, do you have a hard time showing emotion or affection or anything like that? Or is it just me? I mean, I guess it's not just me. I'm sure there's other people out there that are like that, but I don't want to be this way. And it's, it's hard because it's always kind of a constant struggle within myself of like, I want to tell this person this, or I want to do this for this person. But if I do, then I'll feel exposed kind of a thing. Does that make sense? So anyway, super weird, but that is the fifth thing that you probably do not know about. Really fun video for me to make for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. It's kind of random and out of nowhere, but I don't know why. It just popped into my head and I thought I would share it with you guys. So if you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a thumbs up if you want to and you feel really brave. Leave in the comments something about you that I don't know. So that would be really fun for me to read. So if you want to do that, definitely leave that in the comments for me. Make sure if you're not already that you subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos that I put up every single week. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.